Hi everybody, I'm Mike from Neon Streetlight, and this is High Score. Today in our first episode, I'm going to cover one of my favorite games from the Super Nintendo, Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Zombies Ate My Neighbors was developed by LucasArts and released by Konami in 1993 for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Although not a smash hit at the time of its release, the game eventually reached cult status and is now loved and revered by a huge group of people who grew up in the second console generation. While Zombies Ate My Neighbors is known most for its difficulty and cartoonish references to the classic horror movies like Friday the 13th, the Blob, and the B-movie sci-fi imagery from the 50s, it was the music that always stuck with me, and on today's episode we're going to look at why this game's soundtrack is so iconic. So if you are unfamiliar with Zombies Ate My Neighbors, the game is simple. The main gist is you are a teenager, either Zeke or Julie, going around and protecting your neighborhood in various locales from the zombies, vampires, aliens, axe murdering dolls, and giant babies infesting the world. And it's fantastic. Now some of us can hum the tunes or notice the references to music we hear in games, but I wanted Highscore to delve a little deeper than that and turn a spotlight on some of the most overlooked people in the gaming industry, the composers and artists who write the music we hear. The music for Zombies Ate My Neighbors was written by Joe McDermott and produced by George Sanger of Team Fat. McDermott got the job after writing music for the SNES game Cubert 3 and had previously written music for games like Rocket Man for NES and a game called Wings. Digital music back then was a technical challenge, a theme that will no doubt be sort of a meme in this series of videos. I hope to do one focusing us on the tools the composers used to make it in the future. McDermott pushed the technology using human voice samples and much more complex instrumentation, including guitar, organ, and theremin. The challenge was to make something that sounded really different than the games that were being produced at the time. As far as the human stuff, it was very low-res samples. The voice that everyone asked me about is saying, is there anyone outside? The software they used ran on DOS, so the limitations were high, but the SNES allowed for more depth than the NES chips, and McDermott used anything he could at his disposal to create the catchy and evocative themes that are considered classics today. It was really rewarding to do video game music back then because it was so limited. It was like trying to build the Taj Mahal out of beach sand. The tools we used ran on DOS, and the obstacles we had to overcome were real big. Major influences for the music were similar to the horror and sci-fi imagery used for the game itself. Tracks like Weird Kids on the Block and Pyramid of Fear are most clearly nods to the creature features of the 50s and 60s, mixing creepy arrangements with early rock and roll. Other influences came from mid-century surf rock, producing numbers like Evening of the Undead, with most of the music being written on McDermott's Fender Telecaster. While game music was primarily a digital medium at the time, the inclusion of that iconic Fender twang is a big reason the soundtrack works. Fender instruments were the core of the surf sound, and the horror movie marathons and early morning B-movie shows adopted it in the 60s to try to bring in younger viewers. Kind of like how old white men put hip-hop and yogurt and kids' toys advertisements back in the 90s. The melding of these two styles was THE horror sound until the grittier realism of the 70s kicked in, and Zombies Ate My Neighbors is most definitely not that. Between Zeke's 3D glasses and the formal cheerleaders, to the big-headed aliens and retro military outfit of the army man, the game is using that mid-century American period for inspiration, and the soundtrack, in my opinion, nailed it.
Other tracks use the cartoonish nature of the visuals to add a creepier note to the gameplay, with tracks like Chainsaw Hedge Maze using a very nanny nanny poo poo melody against a more evil arrangement. There is, however, a slightly obscure reference used in the score that I didn't even know about until Greg pointed it out to me while finishing this video. In the track Dr. Tongue's Castle of Terror, McDermott makes a very specific reference to Franz Liszt and his piece Totentons. McDermott changed the pace of the piece and used an organ instead of strings of piano, but it is almost note for note the main melody written by Liszt in 1849. It evokes the dark and evil tone of the horror setting, and with McDermott's upbeat rock music weaved around it, the inclusion of this classical reference pushes the soundtrack to a new level of clever. Zombies Ate My Neighbors will always have a place in my heart, and a large part of that is the music. I remembered it even after years of not playing the game, and listening to it now brings back fond memories of childhood, which I think all great game music from the past does. Whether it's Super Mario or Castlevania or even Bioshock, we spend so much time with these games that the music can become just as important as any other element. And when a game nails it, really puts the effort in, and gives you something to hold on to after you're done, that's what pushes any creative piece from good to great, and Zombies Ate My Neighbors does that. It may only be a second-tier Super Nintendo game, relying on the retro gaming community for its praise, but its music can stand up to the best of them. Alright guys, that's the first episode in the can! Please let us know what you think in the comments, and if you really liked it, please subscribe to Neon Streetlight. We're both looking forward to doing more content like this, and I'm personally very excited to do more high score. We have a new one on Metroid coming soon, hopefully sooner than later, but soon. So like I said, if you want more content like this from me and Greg, please subscribe to Neon Streetlight and have a wonderful day!